Why the hate for Windows 8? So I've been running Windows 8 since a day or two since it came out. I purchased it online, downloaded it, installed it. Everything went great. You know, as time went on, of course, there are a bunch of reviews coming out about, oh, look how difficult Windows 8 is to use. Uh, look how strange it is to have this new start menu. Even some respected tech writers come out and say, oh, Windows 8 is just so hard to use. And Microsoft just forcing people to accept the new start menu and not having a start button and they don't know how to close or open things, which is absolutely crazy because Windows 8 is one of the best operating systems that Microsoft has ever put out. Yes, it's different than Windows XP, but XP's been out for, what, 14, 15 years at this point? It's time to move on, people. I don't understand all the complaining about Windows 8. It's easy to use. It's simple to understand. If you'll just give yourself 20 minutes to learn the new interface, at least you will know it. Maybe you won't like it, and hey, that's fine. If, if you don't like it, that's absolutely fine but at least you'll know how to get around and it's very easy so one of the common problems people complain about is there's no start button there's no start button how am I going to get to the start menu well you don't need the start button because when you come to the very lower left hand corner of your screen the start menu automatically appears and you can click that not having a button makes the taskbar look cleaner I like it so instead of having a button you simply come down to the lower left hand all the way down makes it very easy because that's a common catch point right boom right there click it you're at your start menu so then the next area of complaint is the new start menu Microsoft was calling it Metro for a while I'm, I thought they had moved on to start calling it the modern UI but no matter what they call it I'm just going to call it the new start menu or the modern start menu so there's been lots of complaints about this new start menu and I just don't get it this start menu is simple and easy to use. It's streamlined and everything is right in front of you. If I want to open Pro Tools, click Pro Tools. Done. If I want to open Miroslav Fear Harmonic, click it. I'm done. I'm not having to come down here, click a little button, and then search to a little tiny menu that can be hard to see if you're a little bit away from your computer screen. With the new start menu, everything is right at your fingertips. Simple and easy to use. So another one of the so-called problems with the new start menu is that it's just too slow. Well, it's not actually too slow. It's your brain tricking you thinking that it's slower. So if I have Pro Tools open here, which I have open almost all the time, and say I want to get to Notepad, well in Windows 7, of course you would come down and click the start button. That would pop up the little rectangular start menu that we're all used to and that was great at the time. Absolutely loved it. But this new start menu is even better. So if I wanted to open Notepad, I'd click the start button. My little rectangular start menu would come up. I'd then have to scroll through the list to find Notepad, right? Or, give them the benefit of the doubt, you could pin things to the top of the start menu, right? So say I had it pinned. So I'd come down, click, I'd click my pin Notepad, click, and it would be open. Well, I can do the same exact thing with the new start menu. So I can either come down and click, or I can just hit the button right on the keyboard. But I'll come down and click. Oh, there's Notepad pinned. There it is, and it's open. So the argument that it's slower with the new start screen is just completely false. And it's just people that don't understand that just because you're going to another full screen doesn't necessarily mean it's slower than just having a you know portion of your screen taken up. That's the connection between the eyes and the brain that people are thinking, oh, it's slower because I'm going to a different page. Well, you're not. You're just going to a different menu that happens to be full screen. As soon as you realize that, you'll say, oh, it's not really slower. It's just my brain kind of tricking me. So I'll do it again. So I have it pinned right there. It's that fast. And it's that fast for everything. Come up. I can launch CCleaner, D anything, right at my fingertips. I'm not having to scroll through a little tiny menu. So another problem is some people say, I can't see all my programs. Well, if you want to see all your programs, simply right click and choose all apps. That takes you to all your programs and you're not having to dig through the usual start menu, you know, the little triangle area where there are folders and everything that you have to highlight and then the menus come out, whatever. Now I can come over to say the DigiDesign area and see how it's spelled out nice in a highlighted blue letters. I can see everything that says DigiDesign, super easy. Come over, oh, there's F Expansion, all my F Expansion instruments. I can get to real quick. I want to get out of this, right click, done. I'm back to the usual start menu. I could have also just hit the start menu button on the keyboard or come over, I'll do that again, come over to the side and click the start menu and get back to your pinned area. So for most apps that you're going to use a lot, just pin them to the start menu and they'll be right there and you can use your scroll wheel to get to them 
real quick. Another great thing about this new start menu is you can make groups and name your groups. How do I do that? Well, come over down towards the bottom of the right hand side and click this little minus button. That drops everything down. So now I can right click an area, right? So I right click that, you see it's check mark. I can choose name group and I can name that group. Now I've already named this group, so I'm not going to rename it. You can also move your groups around. So say I want my IK Multimedia group to be right next to the Avid group. There we go. Just left click and I'm done. I'm back in my usual start menu. I can choose what I want. If I want to reorder my groups, I can do that. Maybe I want to put this up towards the top. I can do that. I don't want to, so I'll put it back, right? So let me go back. I'm going to put this back where it was and I'm done. So you can see that the argument that the new start menu is slower somehow than the classic start menu and that we had in Windows 7, that's just completely false. That's usually coming from people who haven't actually used Windows 8 to any extent. They may have seen it in the store, they may have read a blog about it, but they haven't actually used it or spent any real time with it. So another common so-called problem is they don't know how to turn it off. How do I turn off my computer? Well, it's actually very simple. In Windows 8 we have what's called the charm bar. We get to the charm bar by coming to the very top of the screen on the right hand side, very top of the corner or the very bottom corner, it doesn't matter. That pops out our charm bar. From there we choose settings and from there is your power settings. See how simple that was to get to and again I'm not having to be extra careful to get this to come out so I can just slap it and here I am. Choose power, shut it down. I don't want to shut it down of course, I'm making a recording. It's very simple, fast. And it's actually very user friendly to do. You just have to know what you're doing. So again, another common problem is how do I get to control panel? Again, very bottom, settings, control panel. There's control panel, simple. We could also come to say my computer and right here in our ribbon menu, which is an addition in Windows 8, the nice ribbon menu, and just choose open control panel, simple. So I'll bring this back up and we'll look at this ribbon menu real quick because it's another great improvement for Windows 8. So usually when you want to change the view, you'd right click. This is how I always usually would do it. Go to view and say, oh, okay, I want to change this to small icons. I don't like small icons. Right click, go back to details. Okay, maybe I don't want that, maybe I do. With the new ribbon menu, you don't even have to make a choice. You can preview your choices. So I'll come to the view tab on my ribbon menu. You can see details is selected. It's highlighted in blue, right? So now if I just hover my mouse over any of these other options, I'll automatically see what that option would look like if I chose it. So I'll hover over medium icons. Oh, that's what that would look like. Don't want that. Large icons, that's not too bad. List, no. Content, no. Well, actually I like content. I'll choose content and it stays. You can change it back, just highlight, just hover over any of these options and you'll get a real time preview of what that option would look like. Really great addition. Also you have other additions of course in your ribbon menu. You can choose item check boxes. I don't want to do that file extension, uh, hidden items, that's, that's a really great addition. Right here in the open, you're not having to dig into a menu. Just check the box, it'll show hidden items. Super simple. You also have other tools right here on your ribbon menu. You know, manage tools, home tools, creating new folders, things like that. So once again, I don't understand all the hate that I've heard on the internet for Windows 8. There's been several videos on YouTube posted saying that even so-and-so can't run a Windows 8, you know? Or look at this IT guy who's confused by Windows 8. Well, maybe he's not a very good IT guy. I've met plenty of IT guys that are just not very smart. I'm not saying that could be the case for everyone. Windows 8 is definitely a new system that you need to learn. But that's the point. You need to learn it. Don't prejudge it and expect it to work like Windows 7 or work like OS X. Windows is not OS X. It will never be OS X. If you like OS X, hey, that's absolutely great. I don't. I like Windows. And Windows 8 runs great. Like I said, I've used it since it came out, a couple days since it came out. And when I'm working on computers that have Windows 7 or Windows XP on them, I find myself wanting to come back to this start menu. I really like this start menu, which is so much easier to see everything in the nice large view. where You can really see all the nice graphics. It's a really uh, eye-pleasing interface. Another great thing if you're into it, which I'm not, you can have things like live tiles. So I could say right click the weather, right? And turn on the live tile and that will update my weather constantly. You can do the same thing for photos, calendars, things like that. So one other thing that people complain about with Windows 8 is they don't know how to close an application. It's so <laughs> difficult. Well, not really. Again, just, just learn it. It's not that hard to learn. Learning new things is great. So we'll open the weather application. So here's the weather app. You can see there's no X's anywhere, so how do I close it? Well, first let me uh, show some other features. I can right click and that brings up a bunch of different options. Now this is the same thing for 
all apps. You'll, you'll have different options for different apps. So it's really great. It's kind of a context menu, right? And also your charms bar will change. Like if you choose settings, now we have different uh, things in our settings than we would have if we were on our desktop or start menu, right? Another thing you can do with your apps is we can grab them. Look here, when I come to the very top, my cursor turns into a hand. Left click, and that grabs it. You can see it grab it, right? All right, so I can grab that, and I can lock it to the side. So now I can have another app right here, which I'll go back to my start menu. You see my weather's updating now. I turn on the live tile, and I'll just choose messaging. I don't have any messaging going on, but I'll just pop it up to show you. So now I can have, be messaging here, scanning through my weather on this side, or I can you know, reverse them if I want. So moving on, how do I close an application? There's no way to close it. You might right click and see your context menu. There's no way to close it. Well, it's very easy to close. Come to the top, our cursor turns into a hand. Left click to grab it, drop it down to the bottom. It's gone. It's closed. How do we know it's closed? Well, we can come up to the very top of the left hand side of the screen. So the very top. And that will pop up our recent apps, right? So we come to the top and kind of scroll down here. And we can see, oh, there's our desktop we can get to real quick. There's the weather that we had open. Go right back to it. I want to close weather. Come to the top and I just throw it away. So I'm left clicking, dragging down, and then release when you get to the bottom, right? You can do this quickly, you know, like that, and it's closed. Or you can do it slowly. You can grab it and just drop it and then release. However you want to do it, it's fine, but it's easy to close. So it's very easy to close the Metro or modern start menu apps. In the desktop apps, we close those as we usually do with the X or you know, Alt F4 or whatever you want to use. So another complaint is when they, someone starts up their computer, they want to be on the desktop. Well, just grab your little desktop tile, put it at the very top here, all right? And when you start up in the morning, just press the Enter key, and it'll drop you right into your desktop. Super simple. So Enter key, there we go. Very easy. Alternatively, you could just hit the Start button, and that'll take you to your desktop. And of course, you could click Desktop as well. So for me, I haven't encountered any application that Windows 8 will not run that did run on Windows 7. So my version of Pro Tools is, at this time is not supported on Windows 8, but it runs fine. Media Composer that I have is not supported on Windows 8, you know, officially, but it runs. Reason, I actually think that is supported. Uh, my F expansion stuff, you know, it's supported up to Windows 7. It's not officially supported on Windows 8, but it runs. Everything I have runs on Windows 8. So in this short video we've learned that Windows 8 is actually very fast, not slow and clunky as some have claimed. We've learned that it's really just your brain kind of tricking you that you're going to another page in order to choose an application versus seeing a little rectangle dropout that only takes up a portion of your page. It's really just your brain tricking you that makes you think it's slower because oh it's a full screen right application versus just taking up a quarter of my screen right. So now we know that Windows 8 in fact is not slower and in fact many times it's faster because things are larger and easier to see. You can pin anything you want to the start menu here. Another thing is just like in you know Windows 7 when you would come down and click the start menu, you'd get your rectangle start menu. You can just start typing to find an application. Well, that's the same thing on the start menu. If I want to find Pro Tools, you know, we'll pretend it's not here, I just start typing. I don't have to choose, you know, Windows F to start searching. Don't need to do that. I can just start typing. So I want to find Pro Tools, P R O T O O. Oh, there it is right there, Pro Tools. Here's all the things that have the word Pro Tools in it. Come over here and see it. These are apps, so settings. I can choose settings. Maybe I want to see settings for Pro Tools files that have Pro Tools, that'll be a bunch of uh, music files. So that's very simple to find things that you can't find. So the arguments that Windows 8 is slower, we've debunked that. The argument that Windows 8 is clunky, well that's that can be subjective, but I think we've pretty much debunked that it's clunky in any sort of way. I mean, turning off the computer, it's not hard, it's right there. Getting to the control panel, it's again right here in our little charms bar. It's not hard to get to. We've also gone over that it's very easy to close your Metro or modern uh, UI apps, right? It's very easy to just grab them and close them down. You can even do that from the desktop. If you want to get to the start menu, you don't want to come down here, or you don't want to go to the side and choose start. You can actually just grab the desktop and throw it away, and then I'll grab you back here as well. When you're in desktop mode, it works practically the same as Windows 7, you know, things like that. So I have jump list and previews and things like that. So, I mean, it's very easy to use, just like Windows 7 was. We've gone over the addition of the nice uh, ribbon interface. I really like that addition. I think we've gone over pretty much every complaint there's been about Windows 8. If you don't like it, that's absolutely fine. If you prefer OS X, hey, that's absolutely fine too. But Windows is not OS X, and OS X is not Windows. If you prefer OS X, again, great.
but other people they like Windows and they don't like OS X. But I wouldn't say that OS X is horrible because it doesn't act like Windows. It's just different people prefer different things, and that's totally fine. So if you've been on the fence about upgrading to Windows 8, I'd suggest that you learn about it first, right? Do some, do your research. If you're watching this video, good for you, you're doing research. And then make your own decision based on what you heard. But from my point of view, I definitely think you should upgrade to Windows 8. It's a great operating system. Again, just take time to learn it. Don't expect Windows 8 to be Windows 7, because it's not. It's a whole new operating system, just like anything new you get. I do a lot of audio related videos like BFD2. I wouldn't start saying BFD2 sucks because it doesn't work like, you know, Strike does, right? Which I also have. I wouldn't say, oh, Reason sucks because it can't do things that Pro Tools can do, or Pro Tools sucks because it can't do things Reason can do, you know? I have monitoring input on Reason. Why don't I have it on Pro Tools? Pro Tools sucks. <laughs> I wouldn't say that because they're different applications and they serve different purposes. So if you like Windows 7, I mean, if you really love it, then just stay on Windows 7. But if you're thinking about going to Windows 8, I'd say go ahead and go for it. Windows 8's a great operating system. As long as you take 20 minutes, you know, 20 minutes to learn it, you'll have it down. You'll know what to do. You'll know where to go. And I really think you're going to like this new start menu. And if you're a normal PC user, which I am not a normal PC user, I, I use a lot of powerful applications, but a normal PC user will really love these things like mail, have like the live mail tile where your mail will just update constantly. You can see it quickly from your start menu. You can see pictures, have a slideshow going on, and same thing for news, weather, all that kind of stuff. So why all the hate for Windows 8? I really don't know. My opinion is that, just like any other person, even if you're a professional, you can kind of become set in your ways at times and not want to learn new things. Also could be that some of those tech people actually really love Apple quite a bit, so Anytime there's something with Microsoft, they really don't give it a good review. Again, that's just my opinion. I'm not saying that's how it is. It just kind of looks that way when you see a lot of tech people giving great praise to all Apple products, and then a Windows product comes out, then all of a sudden everything about it's wrong, then something else, Apple comes out, it's great, even though consumers may be saying, hey, there's a big problem here, and there'll be nothing but glowing praise for the Apple product from the so-called you know tech people. So I just find that very strange. But me... I don't hate Windows 8 at all. I absolutely love Windows 8. I love the new start menu. I think Microsoft did a great job on this new operating system. This new Windows 8 integrates amazingly, or it's supposed to, I don't have any first-hand knowledge, but it should integrate very well with if you have a Windows 8 phone or a Windows 8 tablet. I do not. I'd like to get some. But the integration would then kind of be parallel to what people on the Mac side have, you know, where they have their iPhones and their MacBook Pros or Mac Airs or whatever. So if you're a Windows user, you know, you have a lot to be happy about with Windows 8. So if you're really having trouble learning it, you can come right to this website, the Microsoft website Windows 8 tutorial, and learn how to use all of the new features. Go through all these tabs, learn how to do all this stuff. Super easy. So to sum it all up, Windows 8 is fast, it's easy to use, and it's intuitive. I know that's a buzzword, but it's intuitive, and it's user-friendly. So I absolutely love Windows 8. I think it's one of the greatest operating systems that Microsoft has put out. I love the new start menu. I hope they keep it this way. I like that the start button is gone. Keeps your taskbar a little bit cleaner, gives you a little bit more space. I don't really see a reason for a start button when you can just go right down to the corner. I mean, it's like, what, a quarter of an inch? That you gotta move? Get you your start menu. Searching is fast. Operation is fast. All my apps work that worked on Windows 7. And when you start working on operating systems like Windows 7 again, you're going to say, boy, I sure wish I had my modern start menu back. It's a great operating system. It absolutely just works. So if you want to learn more about Windows 8, you can, of course, go to Microsoft.com learn all about it. Great operating system. I definitely suggest you upgrade. Of course, do your research and learn it, but I think most people will like it once they actually learn it. And again, thanks for watching.